Okay, uh, good evening, Kate. Good evening, sir. Right. So last day, uh, we just uh, revise our grade six lesson and uh, learn about uh, how computer is functioning. We just learn the basics there. Uh, what are the inputs? How computer sense the world? Like we sense the world, we are also sensing the world using our senses. We can see, we can taste, we can smell, we can listen, we can feel. Similar to that, the computer can also sense the world, but in a different way. It can see through its camera, it can feel through its mouse and keyboard. Also, it can listen through the microphone. So likewise, computer also has some input features. And similar to our actions, computer can present its action through the output devices. Those are the screen, printer, speaker, similar to we talk. We are talking similar to that. The speaker is also, uh, right? It is also uh, presenting, right? Similar to our voice. Computer is projecting its voice through the speakers. Then the memory, similar to our memory, the computer is also using its memory to memorize, but temporary. And the manufacturer's memory, so which is uh, actually uh, written by the manufacturers and it is read only, we cannot change it. Everything written at the manufacturing time resides in the manufacturer's memory, that is read only memory. And uh, then uh, the permanent storages or long-term storages like CD, DVD, Blu-rays, SSDs, hard disks, and also the processing devices. That is where the changes happen. Once we input something and the changes happen in inside the CPU, and there's another one called GPU, graphic processing unit, which is helping CPU for graphical tasks. So like games, 3D rendering, 3D editing, uh, maybe um, high-end video, high-end audio. So these things will be uh, rendered or these things will be processed by GPU. That is also a very important component. And whatever uh, inside the computer can be transferred to some other computers and other devices using communication devices. So let's write down this very quickly. So there are six major categories of computer hardware and please write down them. So last day also we wrote something, but this is related to grade seven. Please write down this quickly. Let me know once you're done. Right. Uh, so basically keyboard and mouse, scanner, webcam, microphone, joystick. So keyboard is basically giving uh, text inputs. You can type, you can type letters, you can give commands and uh, symbols. Yes, you can insert them using the keyboard. Mouse. Mouse is to show X, Y coordinates. Right? So the scanner is basically scanning. Scanner is scanning documents. Barcodes, QR codes, documents can be scanned using scanner. That is also a thing that you can use for inputs. Then web camera. Basically images and videos. Web camera, the main task is images and videos. Then the microphone sounds. And joystick is basically used for gaming things, games. Sometimes for some applications, but uh, some applications like virtualization. Virtualization or uh, sometimes like uh, the virtual applications like driving. right? So you can emulate and simulate driving, simulate in applications, driving. Flight simulators, right? you can simulate the flight, simulate driving. So these simulators are using joystick here. Mm, this is driving simulator. Driving simulator, can you see this image? Right, it has, okay, what it has? It has this accelerator, brake and clutch. A, B, C, accelerator, brake, clutch. And also, it has this steering wheel and the signals, everything is there. And the, in, in the screen, in the screen, screen is like uh, your uh, front glass. 
It is like the front glass of uh, a vehicle, in stream basically, right? So and the side mirrors, everything visible. Now you can virtually drive, virtually drive. Actually, it's not. Uh, it's uh, there. Are, it can meet accidents, but it, those accidents are not damaging you. That is virtual accident. Right? This virtual driving, this is possible. With this. this is a kind of joystick. The steering wheel and these accelerator brake, these things are joysticks. These are different kind of joysticks. It's not a, like a joystick which is used for used to play game. And there's another one, flight simulators. Flight simulator, uh, like simulations for flight. Uh, there are like applications, software, as well as there are uh, these kind of simulators that you can use for uh, flight applications. So here, this is flight simulator. Right? Flight simulator, uh, which is basically, it's also using joysticks for controlling thing. It can also use these kind of joysticks, right? Different kind of joysticks are there. See, so different kind of joysticks are there. Jaw, uh, not joysticks, joysticks, right? Joysticks are handukuruni. Here, joystick types. Joystick types. So, see. Right? These are all joystick types. Right? These are all uh, joystick types. Different, different joystick. Even steering wheel. Steering wheel is a type of joystick, and there are gear like joysticks. And here, this is a small joystick. Mm. Uh, and uh, even uh, okay, this this here you can see this steering wheel, this uh, this one, uh, and this one, this gear like thing, and all these are joysticks. Those are input devices, right? Okay, now we have a better clear idea about these input devices. Then the main output device is the screen or the monitor is the main output device, but there are printers, speakers, projectors too. Projectors are projecting this large. There are different kind of projectors. Now we have uh, uh, these kind of projectors, the projectors which can project the 3D images. Those are called hologram projectors. Hologram display or hologram projectors. So those projectors can project in 3D. This you can build by your own. You can use plastic, transparent plastic and build this hologram projector by your own. Right. It's very easy. You can keep it on top of your phone and see this 3D projection inside that. You can see something inside this 3D projector. That is very easy. You have different videos here. You can see this is played actually four. Uh, there are four images or four animated images played in the mobile phone. Actually, you can download these videos in uh, download or you can play these videos in YouTube. These are called hologram videos. Hologram video. Okay, this hologram videos are basically having here four animating images or four animations in four directions. Actually, when you keep uh, that uh, pyramid, hologram pyramid in the middle, then what will happen? The projection will be here. You can see there are four images. These are four sides actually. These four images will be projected in the middle, right? So you can search DIY hologram, uh, hologram projector and create your own one. You can use plastic bottles. Mm, you can use plastic bottles. Not only that, you can use um, plastic uh, or uh, transparent that file cover plastic papers, plastic papers, right? Those you can use here. So you can see, uh, say, sir and some equipment tools and you can see one centimeter one centimeter one centimeter one and around that there is a three centimeter square created then you have to cut and remove the corners like this and stick them together right you have to stick them together okay like this and that is uh, that is what you are finally you have to remove this because you have stick this uh, paper to cut this now finally you have to remove the paper and merge this and this is your uh, glass, uh, not glass actually, a uh, transparent hologram projector. So, make a hill at the end of phone. Again, there a video. You have to place this in on, on the middle of the screen, 
for your mobile phone. Then inside that, you can have a 3D image because of the reflection. Right? The reflection is in the Ara ke athule hai dena ara 3D me. Teke tar apni video ek meke balang ke dote ma apni pain ho. Ah, athule 3D ek athi na apni. Meke de meke athule balang ke dote. Apni pain ho meke athi. Get ready, guys. Yeah. Anna me wagi pain. Can you see? It's 3D, right? It's called hologram projection. Can you see? Let's see. Let's go to the final step, right? Can you see the butterfly and the ring? This is actually a 3D projection. Easily you can do this, right? Fireworks. Easily you can do this. Just give a try. Try it then. But there are now there are modern devices like hologram fans. Okay. Modern devices like hologram fans. Yeah. This fan, when rotating, it can create a 3D image because of the rotation. It can create a 3D image. Those are interesting. And you can see this guy is using a hologram fan, a 3D fan, and showing something 3D. Here, yeah, this one. Can you see this is using a 3D hologram fan? When you rotate the actually, this you can't touch. Because the fan is uh, rotating in a uh, high speed, when you touch, uh, your hand will, uh, like, it will get damaged. So you cannot touch this, because it's a rotating fan. The fan is a LED, a LED, a LED. Here, this person, you can see, is using. So hologram fans also here, this one, you can see, you can try this. So you can buy hologram fan, but I'm, I'm not sure it is in, available in Sri Lanka. I have seen, I have seen but not sure it is available to for purchasing. Follow brand. Follow brand fan. Follow brand fan. No, these are normal fans, right? Holographic fans, hologram fans. That is normal fan. This is not a holographic fan. It's not there. A hologram projector fan? No, still not. It's removed from this, right? Yes. One time I saw that, but it's not now. It's not there. Okay. Have you finished writing this one, Pute? Or still writing? Finish, sir. Finish, okay. Right. Then, can anybody share the, like, I just want to show you how keyboard can be used. Can anybody share your screen in, uh, like, those one of you guys using Windows can share the screen? Okay, uh, can you open Notepad? Can you open Notepad? Okay. Let's see what keyboard can do. And in order to show that to the others, let's uh, open the on-screen keyboard also. Can you open on-screen keyboard? Again, search for on-screen keyboard. Go to this, yeah, yeah, go to there and search for on-screen, uh, that one. Because then others can also see, right? Okay, we need uh, the numlock pad. Therefore, uh, can you just click on the settings of this? Or maybe go to the options, options button. Uh, here you can see, uh, turn on numeric keypad. Hmm, that one, yeah. That will give the number pad, okay. Okay, click OK. But now you can see the additional numeric pad, right? Additional numeric pad. Right. Okay. First of all, the keyboard can be used to enter letters. No, everybody knows that. When you type any letter, you can type your name. And when you type in your name, can you press those keys? You can press your keyboard also, right? That will also do the same thing. And you can either press this using your mouse or you can just type it, right? That is both are working. Okay. That is basically. 
that is basically how the keyboard can enter text Okay, the next is keyboard can be used to, the next is keyboard can be used to give commands. Press Windows key and D key. Windows key and D key. Windows key uh, and D, D key. Right, what will happen? Everything will be minimized. And press Windows D key again and everything will come back. Right. So that is a command. That, that means keyboard is not just for the, keyboard is not just for, entering letters and numbers it is for commands too not just the letters and numbers for commands too right letters and numbers too and also the commands another command windows key and e key windows key and e key That is open in Explorer. Windows key and R key will open the run dialog box. There you can type uh, another command if you want to uh, like to make it more interesting. Let me type another command. Can you type this? Mm, you can type uh, B U B B L E S dot S C R. Okay. Dot SCR, what will happen? Just see. Okay, it will start showing some bubbles, right? But when you move the mouse, it will disappear because that is screen saver, right? So you can just again try Windows key and R key together and then press enter. Okay, because you have already typed. When you move the mouse, it will stop. And when you move the mouse, it will stop. And uh, that is uh, basically a screen saver. Hmm? That is another command. Can you see the keyboard can be used for various purposes, not just for uh, typing letters and numbers, but for the commands as well. Okay, another thing, go to the notepad back again. This can be done especially using this number pad. Turn on the num lock. Turn, sorry, this press on the num lock button in the right bottom corner. Num lock, N U M L O C K, num lock. In this on screen keyboard, it is here. Normal keyboard, like a mehari, theano num lock. Hurry, laptop keyboard, and a samare. Right, when you press num lock, this will, uh, this will be converted into, this will be converted into numbers. When you release it, it will be converted to navigational arrows. Release it, it's arrows. Press it, it's numbers. Okay, now we need the numbers. Numbers there, right? In this part, numbers, not these numbers, right? These numbers won't help. May number Not for this. For this one, you cannot use these numbers. But we have to use the number pad here. Then press the Alt key, ALT key. And type um, 169 from here, 169. Press Alt key. While pressing the Alt key, type 169. 169 and release both keys. 169 and release both keys. Can you see? There's a special symbol in your notepad. Alt key and 65. Alt key and 65. Type ALT key 65, release both. Try again. ALT, then 65, release. ALT 65, release them both. You had to release. Isn't it released? Okay, ALT 97, ALT 97. ALT 65 should give letter A, right? ALT 97 is simple, simple A. 
I think something. Okay, can you can you use your own uh, computer? Do you have no number pad in your computer? Keyboard, Heba. Yes. Sir. All right, then can you do that using your computer without using the on screen keyboard? Press Alt key. Click on the Notepad first. Click on the Notepad. That is not Alt key. That is Windows key. I think you are doing a mistake. Alt key and then sixty five release both. Alt key ninety seven release both. Come on, Karan. This all Alt press kara gini non A L T. Hari ita pasi hara naam beka press kalla deka meka par release kara non. Alt sixty five. Alt sixty six. Alt sixty seven. These are special symbols. Alt one. Can you see? Alt two. Alt three. These are faces. Alt and one. Alt and two. Uh, you are pressing Windows key. That is the reason. Do not press the Windows key. I didn't ask you to press the Windows key. Alt and one. Release both. Alt two. Alt three. Try. These are faces. Right? Can you see? Can I? others also can try? One option is all of you can try try with the on screen keyboard. अबे समारोह के कीबोर्ड बेले में में का नेतू है तो में नाम पैड देखने नेतू है तो दें मगे कीबोर्ड देखें ना इन माय कीबोर्ड इट्स नॉट देयर Sir, I can't hear you. Right, that is another thing that you need to see. Keyboard can be given symbols, commands, special symbols, numbers, letters. Now you know a little bit about that. Okay, that's about your keyboard. So the next is we need to write down something about the processor. Right. So can you write down this part very quickly? Explain the Okay, this one. Explain the purpose of CPU and its location. Explain the purpose of CPU and its location. I need to add some notes also. So quickly finish and let me know. Quickly finish writing. Let me know. Two lines. I need to add few lines of code. The uh, lines here because. Uh, okay. Please add CPU <laughs> sorry CPU has two main components called ALU and CU to Process data arithmetically and logically to process data arithmetically or mathematically and logically to process data mathematically and logically and also mathematically comma logically and also To understand machine language, understand machine language and send control signals 
to each or every each and every or every other components every other components okay the idea is this central processing unit okay we have to discuss what is cpu central processing unit it's like your it's like the brain of the computer so similar to people are having people have brain we have brain similar to that the computer gets brain and that is the cpu that is the central processing unit central processing unit is the brain of the computer Okay, our brain, so how our brain functions? Our brain also has several components. Right, our brain, it also has several components. Similar to that, this CPU, central processing unit, it also has several components, ALU, CU, registers, cache. So those things are there. So basically uh, ALU and CU. And this CPU is there, in a special circuit board called motherboard that is where all the components are connected and coordinated okay so let's see that first i will give you time to write down for yeah motherboard when you see motherboard motherboard is a circuit board in this circuit board there is a special place allocated for the central processing unit or CPU. Here you can see this part is to connect the CPU central processing unit in the motherboard. Let's see another motherboard. Okay, you can see here this view and in this motherboard this area that I'm highlighting is to connect the CPU. Let's see another part. In this motherboard you can so it's similar right this motherboard you can see this special area is for the central processing unit that is to mount it and what is the cpu right cpu is special very large scale and this is ultra large scale actually now it is a, a very large scale and ultra large scale uh, circuit integration okay integration circuit here you can see it can be kept in your hand, right? It's small, but it can do a lot. It's small. But this is what placed in this motherboard. Maybe the motherboard high Right? You can see here. So this is your random access memory. In underneath of this fan, you can see the CPU. Actually, once this CPU is fixed, we are fixing a fan also. Why? Why we are fixing fan on top of CPU? What's the reason? Yes. Why do we put a fan? Yes, the heat. Because of the heat. Yes, it is functioning. It's like our brain. You can see. So normally, even in the fever condition, our brain or our head get the more like so most difficult part to tolerate is our head. Because that will so even infection, it will quickly respond. It get in heat. Similar to that, the CPU will get in heat when it is processing. Therefore, we need to fix a heat sink. Heat sink means special thing. Let's see. Uh, I think it should be there in the north. Mm, ah, here, here. This is the heat sink. Can you see? Heat sink is this uh, aluminium-like thing. And on top of that, you have the CPU. Heat sink is also to absorb the heat. Heat sink again. Tama me ura garne tape. CPU fan CPU fixed It's fixed into the motherboard. Right? But some people are calling this uh, entire it CPU. It is wrong, right? What is this? This is not CPU, right? But system some are calling unit. Uh, that is system unit. That is not CPU, but that is called system unit. Right, okay. So please understand these things carefully. I'm, I'm really happy grade 8 and 9 students, they are telling that they had the examination and most of them got their highest mark for ICT. That is something 
uh, when you are also practicing this, because we have done this for a long time, you were there in our grade 6 class, now you are in grade 7. When you go to grade 8, definitely you should have, your, you can show your colors. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, please learn carefully. So don't call this CPU. This is system unit. Inside the system unit, there's a motherboard. Inside the motherboard, to the motherboard, not inside the motherboard, to the motherboard, CPU is fixed. So understand this very carefully, right? Okay, that is where the CPU is. So you should know the location. Inside this case, in there's a motherboard. Inside the motherboard, actually, to attach mother, to, uh, it's attached to the CPU is attached to the motherboard. Okay, and it has several components, as I said: arithmetic and logical unit, control unit, registers, cache. Actually, this is memory. Why do you think there's a memory inside CPU? Yes, those who have not written, you can write down. While others tell in, others can you tell me why there is a memory inside CPU? Because there's a separate memory, random access memory is there, read-only memory is there, hard disk is also storage, it is a long-term memory. So why there's it's a memory? Temporary data. Yeah, temporary data can be stored in uh, RAM no. Random access memory kati? Main memory kati ne katani. To write whole temporary data, main memory is there. But why CPU has a memory? Is there any reason? The reason is, okay, okay, let's see, we are eating something. While eating, we need to hold that. That is why mouth has a space, right? We are eating through mouth, ne? Right? We use our mouth for eating. And when we are eating, we have to hold the food. We have to keep the food inside our mouth, right? Yes or no? Is it yes or yes, no? Yes. Yes, we have yes, to, sir. to keep food inside our mouth. Similar to that, while processing, data need to be folded, data need to be kept. That is the reason why CPU has a memory. Okay, have you finished writing this? Yes, sir. Yes, up, sir. To, up to the end? New yes, data. sir. Okay, good. Then next week, my plan is to discuss about this. The components of CPU. Mm -hmm. ALU. Don't worry, no need to write down now. ALU is called arithmetic and logical unit. Mathematical functions like addition, division, Multiplication, dividing, these things are done by this ALU. Logical functions like comparison, greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, these are called comparison. You can say A greater than B, B greater than A or 10 greater than 9. Likewise, the comparison need to be done. That is also done by the ALU. And... So even ALU is the bigger component. Don't underestimate the power of CU. CU is like the traffic police. Right? CU is control unit. It's like the traffic police. It's guiding. Ah, here, here, CALU. Take this input. Ah, now, now. Now the memory. You have to get this input. Mm, now, please uh, save this in the hard drive. Hard drive. Can you accept this? Accept this? Okay, now the person is entering uh, something using keyboard. Just take it. Likewise, it's Sending control signals. It's not it's not controlling. It's sending the control signals. It's actually controlling by sending the control signals. It's not directly doing that. So traffic policy is not driving. Traffic policy is uh, in a junction, but he is not driving. Similar to that, this control unit is not doing the work. Instead of that, it's advising. It's telling. Do this, do this. Oh, come on, now do this. Do this. Turn this like this. It's advising. It's sending the control signals. And the memory and the registers are also important parts of the CPU. Okay, then we have to discuss about them in this lesson. And we have to discuss about multi-core CPUs like dual core, single core, dual core. What are these things? We have to just get an idea about that. That I will do next day. Till then, good night. See you all next week, right? Good night, sir. Sir, good day, sir. Good night.
Thank you, sir. Um, bye.